Good morning, modern steaders. Good morning, Figaro. Ah, they're calling. I hear the boy goats. What are you doing, mister? You're gonna trip me up. Did you eat all your hay last night? Is that your problem? There you go. Is that the good stuff? We're calling for our first snow today. Ooh. <laughs> we gotta run out and get some supplies to get the heat working in the workshop today. We'll be back, Figaro. I knew you were gonna be right there, Hope. Good morning. Good morning, girl. Good morning, little man. Yeah, I know you're gonna be there too, little P. Maggie, good morning, girls. Figaro's coming to check on you. Is that good hay blossom? We did a poll the other day on YouTube to pick out our new rooster's name, and Rusty won. Now, we did in comments to figure out who to breed Willow with, and it was Caleb. It's a lot more tricky going through the comments to figure it out and make sure I got every one of them. So the next goat we're probably gonna breed is Blossom. Right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a poll of who we should breed Blossom with on our community tab of our YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that right here. He, we're probably in the description down below. I don't know if I can put one up on the screen. So it'll either be Caleb, which is the lighter goat, or Zeke, which is the darker goat. And then next time Blossom comes into heat, we'll bring her into the breeding pen. I don't know if I showed you or not, but when we redid our merchandise, we redid our green sweatshirt, and we put the black logo on it instead of the tan. I'll put a link in the video description down below to our merchandise store, and let me know, do you like the black logo better or the tan on the military green? You might get headbutted there, Figaro. I'm still milking Willow, but I'm not getting a lot of milk from her. So I don't plan on showing it too much on YouTube. If you want me to, let me know your thoughts. Leave it in the comments down below. You ready to go in and warm up? He's like, yep. <laughs> You're quiet this morning, Moose. Where are you, Moose? There you are, you're hiding. The ducks are hiding too. You ready? I still got a little bit of grain left over from yesterday. They're producing less eggs, so they're eating less grain, but I'm surprised they're not eating the same amount of grain as they were this summer, just to keep their body heat temperature warmer. Let's keep an eye on that. We gotta run out and get some electrical supplies so we can get the heater working this morning. Oh, it's so raw out. It is cold and chilly. It'll be nice to have heat in the workshop. Mm -hmm. We'll be spoiled. Right. 
Yo. In a little bit, we should have heat out here. Good. <laughs> I think the part that's gonna take the longest is figuring out how to go from our pipe to the heater. And I think once we get that connection made, it'll go good. Play my hair again. I am not an electrician, nor do I play an electrician on YouTube. I am the guy who wants heat in our workshop. We need to go from a three quarter inch rigid conduit down here. And I bought some half inch flexible conduit for that. Where we should cut this. You know, if I go there. And then I got this, so I guess we could do, bam. Yeah. Once I get done hooking up this part, I'll talk about the heater we're installing today. Oh, it did cut it. Bummer. All right, go for it. Yeah, I think it's because we didn't have the bag. What? Do this. Got a push in here and that. There we go. All right, so I want to pull the wire through, and then I'll worry about getting it in here after. It's gonna be a tight fit from there on down. There we go. So I'm gonna get down. My guess is this is going to be the hardest pull because it's the thickest wire so far. Yeah, I got it. It's not gonna... Yeah. There you go, you're gonna have to kind of feed it through at the same time, I think. Me. You know we're stuck right here in this bell. All right, pull. Now pull. There we go. We were getting stuck right here where those two fittings meet. So I can switch with you now if you want to come back here. The next tight spot's gonna be this 90, but there's no fittings there to get hung up on at least. Yeah, we're in it. We got it. Victory. Victory. So we need to come down here. I'm gonna go here and this. Let's go a little bit more. I'm gonna go like this and like this after to wire it up. I'm gonna put the two breakers here and the grounds there. So yeah, that's long enough. We have plenty here. Yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna feed the rest of the room up there. So I know this is all a tight fit with the wire. I'm using eight gauge wire. 
but the biggest knockout they give me is right here and I can't go with three quarter inch through here because the three quarter inch threaded part's too big on the plastic PVC. So I had to reduce it down to half inch. We're coming. Oh my goodness. There's Yeah, it's because you're trying to get basically the wires the right size. All right, I guess we don't need all this wire, so let go. The best thing will be to do is to cut this back to say, we'll go a little long here. That's not like a reason. It is if you don't have it in conduit. down the nut. So leg one is white, leg two is black. Well, I have this open. Let's wire up the thermostat we're gonna install. We're using a Honeywell programmable thermostat, so this way we can make sure if we turn it on, it'll automatically get set to go back down at night when we're not in here. Shows right in the owner's manual how to wire it up for an external thermostat. <sighs> Tight quarters to work in to get this part done. Not fun.
I need to kill the power in here. Bam, so we're going dark, real dark. I don't know how that's gonna show up on video, but we need to take care of this first. I guess, you know what? Let's turn this on, get everything done, and then we'll kill the power. That gives us better light. I like that. There we go. We got our 40 amp double breaker. There we go. That one was perfect. I feel like it's getting colder out. Since I said it wasn't that cold, I feel like it's getting It'd be nice to get the heat on. Take the little flapper thing off, the plastics. The little what? Plastic off the flappers. Up top? Yeah. Yeah, I just did. All right, we have this on built-in thermostat at first. Let's turn the power on to it and see. Power's on. The orange light turned on. We're doing good. It's gonna take a minute for that to warm up is my guess. Here's something working. Oh, we got heat. Oh, yeah. Keep going all that down there. A little bit. Can you feel it? Very little. But yeah, you can. Oh, 
tilt it down a little bit. The other nice thing about this heater is it has a switch back here, so it has a built-in thermostat like we had it running, and then we can turn it to external thermostat. I think it's on right now. So it's gonna heat up the temperature, and that fan will come on. We have it set to 70. Let's set it to... So now we just gotta make sure it shuts off when it gets to 60 degrees in here. Oh, I can feel the heat in this back corner right here. I well, I was worried about not coming in the front. No, I know, but I feel the heat right here. I think it's the way it's circulating it. Circulates, it? Boom. Now we got heat. Now it's 53 degrees. Come on, 60 getting a lot of questions why we chose what we chose to heat the workshop. There's a few reasons. We want the electric heat this way. There's not an open flame in the workshop. If we're out here and I'm using the spray paint or anything like brake clean or anything that's got vapors. I don't have to worry about having open flame with a wood stove out here with that going on. The electric heat is nice because we can put it to a thermostat. It can set itself. It can turn on and off when it needs to. If we did wood heat out here we just have to constantly be feeding another fire. And the area we live in, our town has their own electrical department, so the electricity rate in our area or our town is half the price of the surrounding towns because of that. So the cheapest way to heat a building or a house in our town is electricity. We found that out after we built our house, so we figured we'll try it with the shop, see how it works, and we'll see what the prices are. The other reason, another reason is this we got the Northern Tools. We're a Northern Tool Vantage Pro. This is what it is. We sign up for a membership through Northern Tools, and you get really good sale prices here and there, and you get free shipping on their products. So this is a Pro Fusion heater. This will heat up to what was it? 750 square feet, and this area is about 400 square feet, and it costs 160 bucks for the unit. And then we have about. Hundred dollars in worth of electrical work. If we did a wood stove, I'd be probably about five hundred bucks for a wood stove, and probably around a thousand bucks for a chimney. If we did a heating oil in here, we'd have the furnace, and then we'd have the price of heating oil, which isn't cheap. Same with propane. Propane's really expensive. But I believe for our situation, this is going to be the most economical way to heat the workshop. Oh, and that's another thing I didn't forget. We are, gonna, we are designing a water storage system for out in the workshop for all of our animals. And we want to make sure that it doesn't go below freezing temperatures. And if we have this on the thermostat, we don't have to worry about it unless we lose electricity. That's the only downfall there. If we did wood heat and the wood heat went out and we weren't here to feed the stove over a weekend or something like that, we wouldn't, it would get below freezing temperatures in here and our water storage system would freeze. You basking in the heat? Does it feel nice? A lawn chair. No. A lawn chair. We have to go up and get a different thermostat and get this one to work with this heater. I think it's too complicated. We just need a simple one. I was hoping to get one that we could have a program, but it's not going to work. So that heat's been on for about a half hour, 45 minutes. This was around 48 to 50 degrees out here at 62 degrees right now. It's a lot warmer after I clean the stalls. And it's, that wasn't on the whole time either. It's been on and off adjusting it. So it warms it up pretty quick. It's about 35 outside right now. So warms it up good. That's going to work nice this winter. Well, I guess I shouldn't say this winter. It is winter. It's not winter. It's not technically winter. No, but we're getting winter weather. I almost forgot. We got to check on the bacon. Keep an extra coat in here. And go through the bacon. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Can you see that? There's that backlight. Yeah, it's better. Look at that delicious bacon. Look at all them juices flowing. Oh, yeah. We know that's going to make some good bacon. 
Yep. So we just need to go through. I'm just gonna go through, do that, flip it, give it kind of a quick little rub down. Oh, there we go. I try to keep this as simple and easy as possible, but look at all those juices flowing. Oh, yes. Boom. That looks so good. I'll do the same thing for the bottom row now. Bam. So this is... Are you ready for what's out there? No. Me neither. But we need to feed the chickens. Yeah, <laughs> the eggs. Our first snowstorm, guys. It's a lot later than last year, but it's always too early, right? Yeah. <laughs> this way. I think Moose is hiding from the snow, too. Yeah. I don't see him. Moose, are you hiding under the New York City? He says 12 eggs. 12 eggs, all right. I say 10. And Moose, are you afraid of the snow? Is that the issue? Huh? You afraid of the snow? No, he's out here now. Oh, there you are, Moose. <laughs> he said 12 again. Four. Six, eight again. Moose, you're giving Olivia false information. Yeah, it's only eight. Tell you ladies to pick it up for tomorrow. We expect 12 tomorrow, Moose. What do you think of the snow there? Hope, you're covered in it. It's sticking to you. Look at that. Huh, what about you, Blossom? How's that snow treating you? Yeah. Where's Maggie? See? They got nice, round, and plump just in time. Maggie, you're straggling. Did you find something good to eat? Oh. What was that all about, Buttercup, huh? You look like the goat whisperer over there. Yes, I am. Stay warm. We're gonna do Instant Pot spaghetti, but we're gonna do it with our record sausage and try that out. Don't give up this rest for your weary soul. Time to heal, yet still you fight with what you're told. And hold on to your scars and wounds and pass a fall. And I said, ooh, ooh, what was you? guys can see the snow out behind us through the window or not, but still snowing. Living is so happy. Mm -hmm. 
Looks delicious. Hot. <laughs> it looks so good. The breakfast sausage in the spaghetti was delicious. It is so nice having heat out to the workshop now. I don't know if it's me or what the issue is, but I cannot get the external thermostat to work with the heater. I don't know if it's because it's a programmable one and I need more of a simple one. I'm gonna go out, return it, and get a different thermostat, see if that works. But if you guys have any clue of if I'm doing something wrong, let me know what it is that I'm doing wrong. Leave it in the comments. But otherwise, I'll be trying another one. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us, guys. You are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. And I think we got the heater installed just in time. Looking at the forecast, we're supposed to be getting some snow in the next couple of days. So if you guys like those vlogs, be looking forward to them. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.